Oil Tanking Mogs Saldinha Limited, a joint venture between Oil Tanking and Mogs, announced in February 2017 that it will build a new crude storage and blending facility in Saldinha Bay, South Africa. In its first phase, which will come online in the first half of 2018, the terminal will be equipped with eight tanks with a total combined capacity of 8.8 .8 million barrels. Another four tanks will be added later, taking capacity to 13.2 million barrels. The goal is to blend heavy crude grades from Latin America with lighter grades from West Africa and the U.S. to create so-called dumbbell blends that will be exported to Asia for upgrading to produce cleaner fuels at lower costs. The facility will be connected to an existing jetty capable of handling very large crude carriers, a U.S. terminal operator, Jefferson Energy Companies announced in 2015 plans to open a heated 100,000-barrel tank at its crude-by-rail terminal in Beaumont, Texas that will blend undiluted heavy Canadian crude with super-light condensate or tight oil to look alike blends or the individual specification of a refinery in order to help that refinery maximize yields or maximize a specific product such as diesel or gasoline. Another U.S. terminal operator Hazelwood announced in 2015 plans to spend $400 million to construct a world-class blending terminal in St. Landry Parish, Louisiana that will combine surface storage with underground salt cavern storage and an inline blending system to allow simultaneous blending of up to 10 different types of crude to provide a quote boutique crude blend for a given customer based on current market conditions and refinery constraints. Construction on the complex is set to begin early 2016, with completion scheduled for early 2018. According to Argus Media as of December 2016, sources say that foreign buyers of U.S. crude have shown a marked preference for West Texas Intermediate or WTI that is not blended with other grades, especially domestic sweet from Cushing, a grade that could price the NYMEX light sweet contract but is a blend made of a mix of very light shale oil and heavier Canadian crudes, making it both less desirable and less consistent, according to one source. If consistency of quality remains an issue, it may make sense for light Louisiana sweet or LLS to serve as a benchmark for U.S. crude export. This crude is unique in which it must also meet quality specs before loading into a pipeline as well as undergo stricter specs, which also include metals content, microcarbon residue, etc. Sellers should already have experience blending this crude with both domestic and imported oil. Many of these issues with crude blends can be avoided using optimized blending which can help minimize incompatibility problems, stabilize process operations, and improve product quality. Here is our sponsor's experience. The AC Analytical Controls CNS Simdis for crude oil is the most advanced analyzer on the market to simultaneously determine the boiling range distribution of carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur in crudes and final products. In current volatile markets with diversifying qualities of crude sources and qualities, proper decision making is critical to optimize profit margins and protect installation and processes. Early crude assessment data is pivotal in this decision making but can be tedious, costly and time-consuming. Methods such as combustion UV fluorescence and X-ray are widely used techniques for quantification of sulfur and nitrogen in crude. However, none of these techniques provide boiling point-specific distributions for the heteroatoms. This creates the need to assay the crude first and run multiple samples through the lab for measuring these key value differentiators. A few years ago, a new technique was developed in PAC to address this challenge. We named it CNS Simdis, adding sulfur and nitrogen-specific detectors to a high-temperature simulated distillation analyzer leads to a three-channel HT Simdis that provides complete hydrocarbon, sulfur and nitrogen boiling point distribution data in less than 30 minutes, without any need for extensive sample preparation. 
The results obtained by this method are thoroughly validated over recent years and are now used in various refinery labs. Recently the first sulfur SIMDIS method has been approved in ASTM. CNS SIMDIS data has a better distillation efficiency than the standard 15 plates in D2892, and thanks to the CNS specific software it is extremely powerful in reporting. It reports total sulfur and total nitrogen in ppm, percent recovery, TBP boiling point plots, percent off reports for carbon, sulfur and nitrogen, and various other typical SIMDIS parameters. Different studies have proven CNS data to compare with conventional techniques such as UVF or X-ray for sulfur and nitrogen. A DHA front-end analyzer may be added for crudes with very light ends as per ASTM D7900 providing even better accuracy and precision for very light samples. CNS SIMDIS combines the typical robustness and precision associated with gas chromatography with specific detection, and the ability to simulate boiling point over a very wide range. It delivers unique and actionable data addressing some of our most critical challenges very early in the process, and therefore is an essential tool in the refining process and refining R&D labs. Making quality-based decisions on the selection and blending of crudes can be difficult for refiners in today's volatile price environment, because only a limited number of properties of crudes may be measured in the field, such as the basic API and sulfur content typically provided. This may not be enough information for unconventional crudes that may produce a very different yield despite a similar API and sulfur level. These differences can cause different yield profiles decreased equipment performance and off-spec products, the quality of crudes coming into refineries is continually changing for a number of reasons. In a given oil field, wells mature and crudes from different wells are blended. Changes and variation in the API of 40s from the UK, Eagle Ford from the US, and Canadian diluted bitumen blends can occur for a variety of reasons. In addition, there is uncertainty in quality for Canadian heavy crudes when arriving to the refinery due to the natures of the recovery upgrading, and transport processes that get them there. In order to avoid these problems, one option for the refiner is to run complete assays on every batch of crude. In addition to the software for managing crude assays, commercial software programs are available for identifying suitable crude blends. Several programs develop blend recipes using assays for the individual crudes by using assays already in the program's database or entered by the user to meet the final blend properties specified by the user. In particular, some programs also allow the refiner to explore the possibilities for creating so-called look-alike blends of newer crudes that are suitable replacements for traditional crudes. Here are some of the commercial offerings. Additional information on these companies' programs can be found in our just-published strategic report entitled Novel Strategies of Processing Price Advantage Crudes in a Volatile Oil Market. Here is our sponsor's experience. The Mod 4100 Crude Oil Analyzer from Modkin is configured in accordance with customers' request to provide online data about the density, the salt content, the viscosity the water content and the content of hydrogen sulfide. Today refineries must be flexible to give immediate responses to changing markets of crude oil prices and suppliers, and the shifting global demand from gasoline towards middle distillates. To be competitive, refineries must maximize their refining margin by maximizing the utilization of low-cost opportunity crudes in the CDU feedstock. Prices of crude oils are determined by their quality, as can be seen in the upper table. Increasing the API increases the price, others lower the price. Online process analyzers come to guarantee that the crude blend answers to its specification. The Mod 4100 and all included crude oil analyzers has been designed to measure critical properties, which are essential for smooth processing of crude oils, and in preventing corrosion, such as salt, tan, sulfur, density, hydrogen sulfide, viscosity, water etc. Instantaneous analyses of the blend when it is formed, allows online and at real time to fine tune the ratio of different crude oils in a blend, and ongoing maintaining its required quality, with maximizing the utilization of opportunity crudes to increase the refining margin.
The Beacon 3000 is an inline, multi-channel process NIR analyzer. It enables non-contact, real-time monitoring and closed-loop control of physical properties and chemical composition in industrial process applications. Crude oil assay determines the volumes of gas, naphtha, kerosene, diesel and vacuum distillates, which, under optimized conditions, can be produced from certain crude oil. Each crude oil has its own characteristic assay. Refineries must choose the distillation parameters as such, that distillates are produced close to the expectations from the assay. This requires stringent control of the quality parameters of the distillates, being indispensable for online adjustment of process parameters. Remote Sensing Beacon 3000 NIR Process Analyzers measures remotely multiple quality parameters of the distillates, from a distance of up to 3,000 meters or 2 miles away from the analyzer, utilizing standard communication optical fibers. The analyzer is placed in any safe area. While only its extremely safe measuring probes are installed in the X zone, real time analytical data allows adjusting the process conditions according to the quality of the distillates to produce maximum quantities of in spec most valuable distillates, and which is especially important after crude switching. Utilizing assay data in combination with real time process adjustment increases the revenue and refining margin. While keeping in mind all the requirements and concerns regarding crude blending, such as compatibility and processability, it is important to consider the factors that affect the blending equipment performance. The following table lists some important factors to consider when installing or updating crude blending systems. Crude blending operations cover two types of blending systems, tank blending and inline also known as online blending. Tank blending is a batch process where set amounts of each crude oil are sequentially added to a tank and mixed until a homogeneous mixture is achieved, whereas inline blending is a continuous process in which all of the crude blend components are fed simultaneously and blended in a pipeline as the mixture is pumped towards its destination, which is usually the CDU. Production time per barrel of crude blend is reduced for inline blending relative to that for tank blending, and unlike tank blending, the product blend does not need to be stored in a tank, reducing the amount of storage tanks required. However, because process control for inline blending is critical, the process is more complicated in comparison. As mentioned earlier, inline blending is a complicated blending system that requires process control. Here is a non inclusive list of tank and inline blending systems. Additional information on these companies' technologies can be found in our just published strategic report entitled Novel Strategies of Processing Price Advantage Crudes in a Volatile Oil Market. There are several commercial programs to make crude blending a more automated and precise process. Here is a non inclusive list of such programs. There are several major blending issues in refineries that need to be addressed. They are magnified conductivity, crude homogeneity, corrosion control via blending, compatibility, and others. In this seminar, we discuss the first three issues. Crude compatibility, which is a paramount concern when different crudes are mixed together, will be discussed in a separate seminar called, We Are Not Compatible. When two crudes are blended, undesirable crude properties, such as high conductivity, may be magnified. At a National Petrochemical and Refiners Association, now called American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers, Questions and Answers Meeting in the U.S., it was mentioned that conductivity has been known to increase for some crudes when blended with a less conductive crude. For example, a Doba crude from Chad with a conductivity of 440 nano siemens per meter at 90 degrees Celsius was blended with an Arab heavy crude of conductivity nano siemens per meter at 90 degrees Celsius. Crude conductivity can affect the electric grid potentials in crude unit desalters. High conductivity crudes may deplete or even short out the electrical potential, interfering with water coalescence and lowering desalter efficiency. Downstream of the desalter, the probability of fouling and corrosion increases as desalter efficiency decreases. Oil carry under and water carry over may also result. High calcium naphthenate crudes, such as Chad's Doba, are particularly likely to have high conductivities.
consistent, quality crude blends are important for avoiding process upsets, fully utilizing equipment, and allowing refiners to operate closer to maximum and minimum targets thereby reducing quality giveaway. Reliable sampling of crude blends is important for ensuring consistency and quality. Using an inline blending system for blending crude oils reduces refinery tank requirements and produces homogeneous streams that are relatively easily sampled. An advantage of inline blending is that the blend can be continuously monitored and adjusted as needed in a process called trim control. Although simple ratio control can be used to blend the streams, trim control can better account for variations in crude feeds by decreasing crude quality giveaway and resulting in considerable savings for the refinery. Although tank blending typically has a lower capital cost than inline blending, it is more difficult to obtain a homogeneous crude blend with tank blending and to get a representative sample of the crude blend. When using tank blending instead of inline blending, the crudes to be mixed should enter the tank at the same time, which would provide better mixing than adding the components sequentially. However, if the crudes must be added one at a time, the one with a lower concentration should be added first. Because of the difficulty in obtaining a representative sample, Crude blend recipes often must overcompensate by targeting a crude above specifications to ensure that the blend meets specifications and will not need to be re-blended. Additionally, while crude is sitting in tanks, it is advisable to use properly designed mixers in the tanks to keep the crude blends homogenized and prevent water from settling out and getting fed as a slug to the desalter, causing an upset. Mixing also counters layering due to the density differences of the crudes helping avoid possible problems downstream. Blending high acid crudes or HACs with lower tan crude oils can be a quote somewhat reliable means of controlling naphthenic acid corrosion or NAC. The blending is aimed either to achieve a target tan value, usually less than 1.5, or to provide sufficient sulfur to inhibit NAC. A Californian refiner has been reported to use a target of 10 at 1.5 in atmospheric column side cuts. Another refiner has blended Californian crudes having 10 values up to 2.5 with lower 10 crudes to achieve a target of 0.5 or less. The latter refiner indicated at a National Petrochemical and Refiners Association questions and answers meeting in the U.S. that this procedure had been followed for five years in a unit without high alloy that showed no indication of corrosion. While blending to a target tan value does not require any capital expenditure, it is not an option for refineries with a single source of crude. Blending a HAC with a low tan crude may reduce NAC in multiple ways. First and most obviously, it lowers the naphthenic acid concentration in the crude feed. Second, if the low tan crude is lighter, blending reduces the wall shear stress, which also lowers corrosion. Finally, if the low tan crude has a higher level of sulfur, it can inhibit NAC. The major drawback with crude blending to a target tan is that there is no certain value that can be considered safe from corrosion. Even a crude blend with low total tan can yield distillation fractions that have high enough acidity to cause corrosion problems. A solution to this problem is to characterize the acidities of the fractions. There are a number of companies that offer anti-corrosion additives. Here is our sponsor's experience. The Asphaltine Stability Index Test or ASIT, from Baker Hughes, a GE company, is a tool for determining asphaltine stability of crudes and crude blends. Field ASIT services technology uses a portable automated titration device using near-infrared laser to detect onset of asphaltine flocculation. The testing can be routinely performed in the refinery. The ASIT plot is the normalized laser power intensity, on the y-axis, versus the asphaltine stability index or ASI, on the x-axis. The curve inflection point is the asphaltine flocculation onset and ASI value for the test. In the chart depicted, the black curve represents the base crude for the refinery with a moderately stable ASI value. The blue curve is an opportunity tight oil with no well-defined flock point. Additional information is required to define the ASI value of this type of crude. The red curve is the targeted blend of base crude and opportunity crude demonstrating a very unstable crude blend that will require problem mitigation. Blend asphaltine stability information can be used to help guide crude selection. 
blend ratio decisions, and problem mitigation planning to manage risk and maximize refinery profit. Data obtained using the field ASIT services technology can be coupled with the BHGE crude compatibility model to further evaluate blend stability for new and proposed blends. The BHGE crude compatibility model is a proprietary mathematical model that can estimate the ASI of a crude blend based upon the ASI values of the individual crudes and some additional crude characteristic values. The example plots depicted are simple two crude blends. The blue data represents the model calculated ASI value on the y-axis versus the blend percentage on the x-axis, 0 to 100 percent, of one of the crudes in the blend. ASI measurements of physical blends are also plotted validating the model values. Blends containing as many as eight different crudes have been modeled and lab test validated in a similar manner. The values used in the crude compatibility model can also identify the theoretically defined incompatibility points for various crude oil blends. These would be blends that potentially should be avoided, or more extreme mitigation efforts required. A crude oil database can be developed to facilitate planning of how a new crude, or a new crude blend, may impact the refiner's operation with respect to asphaltine stability. The model also facilitates ASI quantification of various crudes that do not produce a well-defined flock point. How these no-flock crudes behave in the blend is of strong interest, as many of these crudes induce asphaltine instability.